Hola everyone, my name is Glenn Angel, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Guild Wars 2 on a controller. I've been obsessed with this game after finally giving it another chance in May of this year, but I wouldn't have been able to stick with it if I didn't figure out how to play this on controller. I come from Final Fantasy XIV, which has such a good controller layout, honestly probably one of the better ones for MMOs, so much so that literally people in World of Warcraft actually created an add-on called Count Support to uh, make something very similar to it. I know for me, and probably a lot of other people, playing controller just is a lot more comfortable. And even for some people, it might be something that's a necessity. Like the whole reason why I switched from keyboard to controller when I was playing Final Fantasy XIV is because when I raided, my hands would actually start to cramp up. So in this video, not only am I going to show you my specific setup for controller, but hopefully I'll teach you how to build upon it or even make your own from scratch. So let's get into it. To start, all you're going to need is your controller and Steam. If you already know how to open up Guild Wars 2 from Steam and also know about the community tab, then you can skip all this and head right into like the default keybinds. So first you're gonna want to open up your Steam library, head down to the bottom left and click on add a game, then go to add a non-Steam game. Now for most other games, you could just scroll down until you find the game that you want to add, but for Guild Wars 2, it doesn't work. For some reason, even if you go through this route, hitting the play button will not open Guild Wars 2. So you just wanna go ahead and uh, browse, and normally it's under program files and then Guild Wars 2 and you're going to want to check this GW2-64. If you download it somewhere else, then hopefully you know where it is. And then once you rename it, you're good to go. Now, if your controller is all set up, then you should see the controller layout right down here. No need to open a big picture mode or anything. But if this is your first time trying control out with Steam, you're going to have to do some configurations. Um, I personally don't remember how that goes, it's been a hot minute, but there are plenty of videos on YouTube to find that out, but we're just going to keep on moving. So you're going to want to click on the controller layout, and then this window will show up. It's not going to look anything like this, it'll just look empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to browse configs and go to the community tab. This is where you're going to find mine if you have an Xbox 360 uh, controller and maybe if you play an Xbox One controller, I'm not 100% sure and I'm pretty sure that if you use a PlayStation controller, you will not see mine on this list at all. Even though I'm using a PlayStation 5 controller, I'm using DS4 Windows, so that's why it's being read as an Xbox 360 controller. Um, if you do see mine, it should be version 2.0, which will be posted after I post this video. But you can also just look around and see other people's configurations, see how they have it all set up and explore. But um, let's go back to mine. So here we are in game with my character. Uh, we'll start with the very obvious. First, uh, you'll see that we're set up in action camera mode. This is the mode that makes it possible to play on controller very comfortably. Um, if you don't know about it, I believe, so it's under the settings and it's actually a key bind, I believe under the camera settings, yes. And I think by default, it is not bind. So you have to bind it to a specific button. But what it allows you to do is instead of having to, you know, move the camera around with like, your mouse button and having to target with the mouse essentially this becomes the way that we aim move and what have you so the left joystick is to move our character around the right joystick is to move the camera around uh now be warned for some odd reason this might just be a me thing but if i hold down the left trigger or l2 or the right trigger r2 uh the camera moves faster for whatever reason this is very noticeable when you're zoomed out and the camera moves at this speed and then it starts zooming and especially if you're trying to like aim something like oh wrong button if you're trying to aim something just um it can get pretty difficult that was not a good <laughs> that was not a good showcase of that but uh just something to keep in mind the start button will open up the hero menu or you know use the h button and the select button will open up the map if you press it twice the reason why it's a double press is because we actually have uh, special combinations that open up other things when we hold down the select and combo with other buttons. We'll get into that much later. If you go to the D-pad, you'll see that the up and down arrows will zoom in and out of the character. The right D-pad will be what opens up your inventory. And if you hold down the left on the D-pad, it'll open up the mount add-on goes to radial, which lets you select your specific atom with, uh, you know, this button and your right joystick. If you don't have or don't want to use this add-on, there's an alternative that we'll go into much later that's also easy, but just want to let you know that I didn't have this until recently and it's made a huge difference in just getting my mounts out. If we go back to the joysticks, clicking on the left joystick will switch our weapon and clicking on the right joystick will actually do the about face. 
Now this, basically, as you can tell, will flip your character and the camera around. I found that this has been very helpful when you go against enemies or, or even players like in PvP or World vs. World that go behind you to quickly, uh, you know, get the upper hand because it is very difficult just in most games that you have to turn quickly to move the camera around and keep on attacking. I, I'm still trying to get used to it, but if you feel like you personally don't care for it, if you don't think you're going to be playing any pvp or world vs world on a controller you can easily just change it to something else if you would like with well, that being said let me actually show you how we go about changing different things so let's say you don't want to use the about face on the joystick or just in general you want to change any of the buttons that i already have all you have to do is go to whatever section you want click on the button for the joysticks and the joysticks only you're going to want to look for the click action like here for the right one and click action for the left one for things like the uh left trigger left bumper select start what have you uh these will actually use something else it will use you will look for the binding specifically so you know if you want to change the select here the binding is what you will actually press to try something else and for things like the d-pad and the face buttons it's a lot more intuitive you see the buttons right here you change it great so let's go to the about face as an example. We'll go to the uh, the, the click action. We'll go to the click action. And here, essentially, you have the little description of whatever it is. Let's say you want to, I don't know, um, use a novelty, right? And I know that by default is you. Uh, so essentially, here's the title. And then you just click on the button for whatever you want. I'm not going to change it right now because I know I'm going to forget. Uh, actually, if I go back, will it change? great it does change okay great uh, about face so yeah and then all you have to do is click on a, a button that you want on the keyboard here specifically and then you'll change it and it's that simple just know if you use any uh button combinations like alt one or control q or shift three any of those i don't think my methods specifically are the best um, I actually do use one that has a combo of buttons, but it does work a little bit awkwardly. So if a lot of your keybinds specifically do use like those shift all control modifiers, you might want to look elsewhere to find out how to do it more effectively. All right, continue on. Uh, let's look at the right bumper or R1. We have this set to the left button. You know, very self-explanatory. So essentially in game, whenever, let's say I want to open or close the specific like achievements or, or tax or if i want to go up and pick a specific thing from the menu it'll be the right bumper as you can see from the image click and then for you having the right bumper be the left mouse just seems weird because it's opposite again you can easily just go over here and select the right mouse button or anything else you want if that is what you would like but now let's take a look at the uh left bumper l1 again i'm going to be mix matching the, the the names of the xbox and playstation throughout this whole video i'm so sorry um you'll see uh it's it's a bit more fancy she she has a lot going on and i think this is a good time for us to talk about activators so basically an activator is however you press the button it'll actually activate something different so for l1 a regular press if i just press whatever it will be a right mouse button no matter what but if let's say we do a long press if i hold on the l1 for like about a second i'll actually activate my uh, griffin keybind which is the left bracket i personally just like it because it just feels comfortable there's really no rhyme or reason no no like this is optimal whatever it just it just feels nice you can obviously take it off if you would like um and that's actually very easy to do if you decide you don't want to have this or you don't even want to change it all you got to do is under the activation type under the menu you want to go ahead and hit uh none slash remove activator mind you uh when it comes to this and activators you only need to worry about the thing like these these two things activation type and binding all these other things do not worry about it i legit do not know like what they do so there's no reason to even like uh worry yourself about it unless you want to get more technical now for a double press I actually forgot I had this. So essentially, very quick and easy. If I double press the R1 button, I auto run. I fully forgot I had this bind. I had it, I was actually using something else, and now I'm trying to decide whether or not this might actually be uh, more comfortable or not. So here are your activators, um, and you can do this for, again, literally anything. Y'all are going to be software engineers by the end of this. Y'all are really smart, it's amazing. Let's take a look at the uh, 
X, Y, A, B, square, triangle, all those buttons. What we have here is um, bind to my a square button is the dodge roll. Oh, I'm a mirage, so I forgot I'm not going to actually dodge. But yeah, here is uh, just we're miraging. <laughs> that is my dodge specifically. And if you take a look at the Y or the triangle button, we actually have that set to space. So this is actually our jump. Now, this may seem weird or different or like opposite to most players, but this is actually what our jump button is in Final Fantasy 14. Uh, so that's what I'm using. But again, you can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to say this like a thousand times and I'm sorry, but it, it's true. Like if you don't like it, change it. Let's actually take a look about changing the A button to be the jump. Now you'll see that the X or square button is set to V, which is the default for dodge. Uh, the Y is set to space bar, which is our jump. The B is set to escape. Uh, and so that's what the B is, spoiler alert. Um, but the A doesn't have like a specific button. That's actually because the A button has two different activators. Uh, the regular press, which is the uh, normal interact F button, uh, which is the default, you know, the default interact button goers too, but also a double press uh, for the special action button, which is the N key. So yeah, if you choose to change this to be the jump button, all you have to do is click on binding. Uh, you can change the naming to jump and then just uh, click on the space button and then you will have your jump set to A and then you'll probably want to set your Y or triangle to the F key for interact. And the B key, obviously it's for all of your wonderful cl uh, window closing needs or to open up this main escape menu. Okay, so we're almost done with the default, not really, but the last thing we'll talk about for now are the two trigger buttons or L2 and R2. So what these buttons do is they emulate the Final Fantasy XIV's cross hotbar system because what happens is when you click on this, that doesn't help. When you press this button, you see it does it change to left hotbar. It will change the default to the left hotbar. And now all the buttons you press here while you have the uh, L2 button held will be these. Same with the R2 button. When you hold that down, you'll go down to the right hotbar. And you'll see here, there's a change to default. Essentially, when you release it, it'll go back to the default. And same here. We're gonna dive a little bit into how this actually works. This might get a bit confusing. I will do my best to explain it, but here we go. So we go over to this part. Um, this, this full action pull, because it is a trigger button, Steam can read if you do a press when you bring the button all the way down or like halfway, otherwise known as a soft pull action. We're not going to worry about that. That's a lot. <laughs> That's very technical for our purposes. We do not need that, but you can definitely look more into it if you want to try it out for this game or other games. But going to the full action, if we click on this, um, we have a an activator, which is a start press. The start press, literally, I do not know what the difference between a start press and a regular press is. All that matters is that we're holding the button down. Great, boom, love that. And the binding, instead of it being a specific button, all you need to do is go to this bar, press the first line, and this is your action options. Um, if you see, the only one really is to change action set because there's nothing else for us to do. Um, so super simple, just hit okay. And essentially what this does is holding down the left trigger button will change it to left hot bar i keep these off i don't see them to be honest maybe it's something that you haven't on on big picture mode but i do not hear a beeps nor do i see like a list of it changing so yeah that's how that works hopefully that made sense uh i know it can be a bit confusing i'm not sure if i explained that all the way correctly but essentially what this activator is just doing is that it is detecting that we're holding down the l2 button and then changing it uh, from the default to the left hot bar. So let's take a look at the L2 in the left hot bar, and you'll see it's an, also a change to default. It's a change. It's a change action to go back to the default, and you'll see this is a release press. This is very important. Basically, when you release the button, boom, bam, you go back to default, and everything else is set the same exact way. So that's all you need to know. That is specifically for if you want to make another action set and you want to try out with different with other different buttons, holding them down, releasing. That is how you do it. Now, moving away from the technical stuff, let's go into the actual buttons or more of a visualization of how this left hop bar and right hop bar work. All right, everyone. So here we are in Final Fantasy 14, and here's my Femro looking beautiful, just reading her book. Uh, so yeah, so this is how the crossbar setup 
is for Final Fantasy XIV. Now, if you take a look, if I hold down the, oh, hold on. Okay, I'm good. If I hold down the um, L2 button, and actually it shows right there L2, uh, these things highlight. And you see how they're spaced around on the square triangle circle X. And also if I hold down the right, that will be the right one. So essentially these will be the weapon skills. These will be utility skills. And then these four up here, if I uh, do a little drag and drop, this is essentially think of them as the profession skills. And I'll go ahead and change the layout to be similar to my Mirage right here with some editing magic. All right, great. So you notice how we don't have the five or the elite skill because it's only four buttons instead of five. I normally will not put buttons on the d-pad uh, when it comes to skills just because it's awkward movement in my opinion. You can definitely do so if you choose to because again this is your game, this is your controller layout, it's however you want it to be, but for me I'm not a fan of that. Uh, so I'll actually show you first of all where the profession skills are and then that will actually show you where the 5 and the elite skills are. So in Final Fantasy XIV, we have a whole lot more buttons to press than just 16, and we make it work because we have these different sets. If I hold on the R1 button, I get to switch between all these different sets, which we have eight of. But normally people will just use uh, two to three. So the way I have it set up is we have the profession skills set to set two. All right. And now this is the left side. We see that essentially F1, F2, F3 are on the left hot bar in this version. And F4 is set to the right hot bar for this version. And uh, the ones here, the ones next to it would be essentially F5 and F6. And F7 will go literally anywhere. I think only two professions actually, or two elite specs really use an F7. So that can really be wherever you want it to be. Um, and what happens is we actually have five and the elite skill down here in where the x button would be or the a button now how do we get from the set one or in gilbert's case the left hot bar and the right hot bar to the new ones in 14 there are two different ways essentially what you can do is you can double tap one of these hot bars and it'll change um i don't do that because it's very uncomfortable for me uh it cramped my fingers incredibly so what i do is first i would hold down the left trigger button and then immediately hold down the right trigger button together and we have the left side of set two just right there boom and the same thing goes with the right side we start with right trigger left trigger and boom we have the right side of the right trigger so to use f1 f2 f3 and 5 it will be left trigger right trigger and then here you go all your buttons and if it's uh f4 f5 f6 or zero or your elites it'll be right trigger left trigger and then here you go all right, so we're back in Gilras 2, and let's see how this looks in the actual menu. So here is the layout for the left side uh, for one, two, three, four. And essentially, the way we get to the different buttons by doing the combination of left trigger and right trigger, we use something called uh, mode shifting. So if I press on it, it should give. Oh, all right, should give a good uh, summary where it says uh, mode shift. When pressed, this button will shift the normal mode of the controller into its alternate mode, and it's great. So essentially, in this menu, if you were to do if you were to do it from scratch, you'd have to choose uh, what button in combination with the specific set you'll use to change it up. That sounds like that doesn't make sense. Basically, while you're holding down the left trigger to be in the left hot bar mode this is telling you that okay so now along with that while you're pressing this button aka the right trigger with the full pull you'll get access to these buttons the f1 f2 f3 and 5 and it's really that simple so again left trigger right trigger and then i should use what is it called again yeah mind wreck that's f1 left trigger right trigger uh y f2 and then f3 and lastly five very simple all right same thing goes with the right hop bar we'll go back to uh these buttons the yx b a and again normally when you hold on the right trigger you have six seven eight nine great when you go into mode shifting you'll choose the option of left trigger full pull to the button pad and you'll have f4 f5 f6 and zero this is the main reason why i wanted to make this video because this part is the least intuitive like like mode shifting it's it's very hard to wrap your head around this if i were just to have the setting on a list and you had to find out from there so now let's go over some targeting it's also found on the left hop bar and it'll be under the uh r1 button and we have a whole slew of activators once again essentially the way i have it set up is if you press 
the right bumper uh, in the left hotbar one time it'll essentially be your tab target this will be what you essentially if you were pressing tab it will work the exact same if you do a double press what happens is if someone were to mark a target for you pressing the r1 button twice will actually essentially be your t button or it'll like focus the target that someone has pointed out and if you yourself actually want to go ahead and mark a target i have it set to uh holding down the button for a little bit like about a second or so and then you yourself will mark that target and opposite to that i also put in some ally targeting options so on the right hop bar if you were to press uh, L1, you'll actually see two different activators. Uh, pressing it normally will essentially be your ally tap targeting. You just go from ally to ally. But if you double press it, this will be your nearest ally. Uh, whoever is closest to your cursor will actually be the one that you will um, focus, which is which is very good for Spectre and other classes that do like single targeting, which is, I guess, only Spectre at this point. I've also set up a whole bunch of different uh, key combinations to open each of the different menus without having to uh, go into mouse mode and having to just drag your joystick over to these windows by itself. And we're actually going to go back to the select modifiers that I mentioned before. So if we go to these buttons once again, uh, the YX, BA, um, you'll see that we have a mode shift uh, for the select button. I am not going to press this right now because there is a glitch that once I press this, all of these buttons will just like this stack button and it will just mess up everything. So I'm not going to look uh, click into that, but I will tell you what these all do. Now they have uh, all different types of activators. So we'll go a uh, one by one. So if you hold the select button, uh, as you can see on the screen and I press the uh, square button, it will also bring up the map uh, just like double pressing this. This might be easier for some people. I just want to add that in as an option. Uh, I personally don't use it anymore. I thought it'd be more useful, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but if I hold down the select button and double press on square and I'm playing Ranger, that will actually uh, open up the pet menu, which is the default to K. And if we hold on the select button and press triangle, we'll get the social menu, uh, you know, your friends and also a very, very easy way to go to look for group to uh, get into your fractals or maybe like your rates for the week or, or what have you. I was very tired of taking my hands off the controller just to press the Y button to get this up. So I was like, OK, let me just go ahead and make a my own command for that. But also, if you hit select and double press Y, you'll get the guild menu, um, which makes sense because these are both, uh, you know, social windows. Um, now, if you hold select and press the uh, circle button, then this will actually bring up the world versus world menu. Uh, and also, if I double press it, it will be the PvP menu. And select X will give me the black line training company. And if I double press it, it will actually open up my mail. I think those are all the menu options from what I see, yes. Um, and there's another way to open up the menu that I'll go into in a second. But those aren't the only... Um, select modifiers we have. If I open up the map, I actually have it set to, if I hold down select and the down button on the D-pad, I'll go down the, the, the floors of the map and I can go back up with the select and up arrow. It's made navigation so much easier just in general. I uh, added this recently and I absolutely love it. Yeah, so that's, those are all of these select modifiers. And also for PlayStation players, um, I have my select also bound to my touchpad. So whenever I touch my touchpad, it actually activates the select button, uh, just to let you know that. Uh, and I believe that you can do that same thing on Steam. So instead of having your select be do all this, you can just like have the touchpad be a button for a modifier. But also just to let you know, sometimes um, these windows will glitch for whatever reason. So like if let's say I, I open up World vs. World, it'll like barely fade in and you have to do it like two times for it to come. It's, it's a weird glitch. Sometimes the windows don't open, but normally it does. Like for now, thankfully, it's actually working perfectly on, on camera, but sometimes it just will not work in general. And just a few more like miscellaneous keybinds that I want to go over having. So on the right hop bar, um, the D-pad, I have these set to be the master skill, the skiff, and novelties. I haven't really unlocked fishing yet, so I haven't really played around with all those, but I just designated this specific section to be novelties and mastery stuff because you know it's it's these little like shortcuts that are here that make sense in my brain and on the left top bar the arrow keys actually control the mount ability one and two uh i specifically made these for the griffin so essentially when i'm diving we go ahead and find a place to dive actually i think i could dive here right maybe i don't know 
If I dive here, I can go and use this button. I can also use X because that's the dodge. Um, but I use this so what I can also move the camera around. Um, it's not the best. I'm still playing around with it, but it is just a, an option for now. If you want to try it out, there might be better ways. But again, I'm still testing that out because I only just recently got the Griffin a little less than three weeks ago. But we also do have some mode shifting specifically for the D-pad as well. So if we go to if we do the left trigger plus right trigger, this is where I had the um, the auto run specifically. So it would be left trigger, right trigger, and then uh, the right uh, D-pad, and that would be my auto run. But honestly, hmm, I don't know if I like double uh, double left bumper either. So we'll still play around with that. And that's the only thing we have with the mode shift on this side, but going from the right hop bar, so doing right trigger, left trigger, we have more options. So we have the F11 menu, which is the settings. So if we do right trigger, left trigger, and then up on the arrow key, here are all our settings. And again, you can scroll up and down with the D-pad. If we do right trigger, left trigger, and then the right arrow key, this is our toggle walk. You know, for those moments when you want to RP and then you can also like add in a little auto run so you can just walk by yourself and, you know, just take a load off, just enjoy the scenery and all that stuff. The right trigger, left trigger, and then down arrow will actually be your dismount slash mount button. This specifically I put for whenever I'm on my skiff and I do not want to wait for it to dock before leaving it, you can easily dismount off of it. But also chairs, you need the dismount key to get off of chairs which was very awkward when I was like, oh, let me delete it now that I have this add-on and I could not get off a chair. So that's that's that. Um, the right trigger, left trigger, and left arrow key once will toggle the chat, toggle it on and off. Um, and again, you'll probably have to, uh, for all of these, you'll have to see what your keybind is specifically. I'm just showing the keybinds that I have set up and also so you can read and understand the program better. But also if you double tap it, so right trigger, left trigger, and then double left D-pad, it takes away the whole UI. And it's nice for whenever, like, let's say, you know, you're flying, you're traveling or whatever, like just on the fly, turn off the UI and it's great. Um, but this is the one that I said that was a little bit awkward because the default keybind for UI, the show and hide UI is control shift H, but I set a, a secondary one to be num8, uh, numpad8, which is much easier to keybind because when I did the other one before, it would open the hero menu randomly sometimes and like it was just awkward so that's why i personally don't try to even use any uh combination with keys because i haven't found success but you might if you want to go ahead and look a little bit more of it up okay so now let's talk a little bit more about action camera and we'll actually go over some of my camera options to show you how i specifically go about combat so you just have to do f1 or you know the right left up um, and you'll go down to the camera mode or sorry, no combat and movement. That's the one. And these are the ones that I specifically have. So definitely turn off tap to evade because the joystick, if you do tap it twice, it is an awkward evade. It, it gets annoying. So yeah, you don't want to accidentally dodge when you don't want to the double click, right click. I honestly don't see any, I don't see any use for these to be honest when it comes to, um, action camera, the reticle and just clicking on the bumpers like I do I don't I personally don't see that it works at all so I just ignore these to be honest definitely auto target because auto target helps out when you just move the camera around you find a target and you hit and then there you go but I will say sometimes even with auto target sometimes your character doesn't update when you're aiming at someone so let's say these are enemies if I want to make sure I want to hit this character but for some reason I'm still locked to this I'll move my camera cursor to it and then just hit the left bumper, which is also the right click and make sure I'm actually selecting them. So you see here it's they're selected. Um, uh, and yeah, it just it just works out because sometimes sometimes it's, it's not perfect in my opinion or in my experience, at least log ground target is very important to have um, in any mode, honestly, but definitely uh, on controller because you don't want to have your your cursor all the way out and you're targeting over here like it's just not gonna work because also in general especially if you're holding on to to try to do five or your zero key it's just it's very hard to adjust because your thumbs are too busy pressing buttons to rearrange it with the uh right joystick 
so yeah turn that on and it'll be much better like <laughs> you'll be you'll be set to go you'll be fine and for ground targeting i personally like to use fast with range indicator uh that way i make sure i try to aim with the reticle and i can just look for like a hot second to make sure i have it all set up like let's say in case uh for some reason it's like barely off center i can try to like adjust it in the last few moments it's much better to try and do your best to uh, know where you want to have your ability, aim it first, and then just like go. But again, you can always choose instead of doing that to have it set to normal so that way you have time to uh, properly use it. And you know, you can adjust it all you want, and there you have it. I personally don't want to play like that, but I think that's perfectly fine. And one last thing when it comes to actual buttons and keybinds, I fully forgot to mention this earlier, but. I have things set up so if you are uh, holding down left trigger and then left bumper or right trigger right bumper your camera will actually uh, look behind you and I specifically put that for PvP uh, to do things like uh, this like let's say I'm running forward I press this and then I'll use my uh, staff 2 to blink instantly forward um, this is still pretty new I don't know how well it works out uh, or how useful it is, but I'm trying it out along with the, you know, about face buttons specifically for like the PvP and World vs. Worlds modes. Again, if you don't like it, just take it out, but I'm trying it out and I'm explaining, uh, I want to explain that what it does when you see it. And to see a list of my keybinds, I'm just going to go ahead and open the menu and slowly scroll through it and you can go ahead and pause as you see fit. And lastly, let's talk about if you want an alternate to the mount add-on GTB2 radio, and you just want to, you know, use your add-ons regularly with the game's UI. So what you would do is you would go ahead and make a new action set, and you'll probably call it mount. And I would say don't copy anything from any of the action sets because then you would have to delete a lot of different mode ships, and that would just take way too long. Because uh, honestly, all you need to do with this new um, action set is go over to the right joystick uh, for the style input choose the directional pad and then here you want to for the up obviously a w a for left s for down and d for right so now you have this set up that you can move around with the joystick and that's all you need for the movement so now going back to the default what you would do is again come back to the d-pad go over to this button you want to hit remove and then you'll also like delete this because it's not necessary. And then you'll change this over to a change action, change action set. Uh, that's the only option we have again. So we'll just hit OK. We'll set it to mount. So now whenever you hold down the left D-pad, it'll go to mount, uncheck these, hit OK. And now you have that set up. Uh, make sure with the mount, you'll also come back to the D-pad. We'll set this to directional pad, I believe. Yes, there it is. And we'll also change this to a change action set, hit OK. Have it changed to default and very important go back here go to show activators this is how you'll see any activator for any button um i didn't mention that earlier probably should have but that's how that is and you'll set it to release press the other one will be set to regular press again regular and start i think do not matter um but this one specifically does and now you get to play around specifically with um the mounts so literally anywhere you want to go so Let's say we'll do X will be, I believe my Raptor is period, maybe. Oh, no, no that's, um, I think it's comma. All right, so my Raptor is comma. So we'll go ahead and just put this down as Raptor. So that way we know when we look at it in the future, hit comma, go back. Now that's all set up, go into the game. So I'm going to hold down the left D-pad and then hit uh, square. And here is my Griffin and you can go ahead and put all your different keybinds for your different mounts there as well. And now I'm going to remove this. So if you make an action set that you do not like, uh, just make sure you're on that specific action uh, set, hit manage action set, and then just hit delete, and you are good to go. Hi, it's Glenn. 
a day later because I forgot to record an outro. But congrats, you now have your own Guild Wars 2 controller setup. You know how to use the Steam controller configurator, whatever it's called. You can use it for literally any other game. And this video was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. But thank you so much for sticking through it. Thank you so much for watching it. Because I'm on YouTube, I'm now legally obligated to tell you to like, comment, and subscribe. But actually, please share this video if you think someone you know or maybe one of your friends might enjoy it because who knows maybe they might start playing more controller or this might be the thing to spice up the legendary grind but first i want to take a minute to just thank that dang boy right here like honestly because of your configuration it's what led me to play and really fall in love with this game thank you so so much and also it is the basis the foundation of the build i have today and also, I did want to bring up that the reason why I have some mode shifting options when really you could get the same effect with the function keys uh, by using other action sets, I found that sometimes it glitches out. Like if you're pressing those buttons a little too fast, Steam will just not know what's going on and you'll get stuck playing. Uh, you'll get stuck hitting the function keys instead of actually trying to dodge. So the mode shift so far has worked perfectly for me. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope it helps at least, I don't know, maybe like five people. People say one, but you know what? I hope it helps at least five people. Uh, but also, I'm on Twitch at Glen Angel, same as my YouTube. I stream three days a week. Those days are still not determined. Sometimes they change, but usually it's around 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, but you can also find me on Twitter at Hello Glen Angel, where I love to be a memeing nightmare. And I fully understand if you are too lazy to go down to that description and click those links, just like I'm too lazy to make any graphic on this video. Okay, this video is like over 35 minutes long. Let's not make any longer. I'll see you all next time. Bye.